I'm Paul Arneberg. I found, founded and I direct the Jughead's Youth Juggling Company based in Edina, Minnesota, a suburb of Minneapolis. So it, uh, I founded it 22 years ago. It's a full-time work. Started in childcare, spun it off, and now I have 116 kids that come at least once a week uh, throughout the school year and then we have summer camps and go to festivals like Mondo. Well, every day from the youngest rep kids, which would be third or second graders, all the way up to the seniors in Ultimate Club, we do warm-ups where one of my student leaders or a captain, which is kind of synonymous, they will have them simply start with 10 singles. So it's clubs, it's 10 single flips, if it's balls, it's 10 at about um, three ball height, which is between the eyes and the bottom of the face. And then they, after 10 singles, and they often want to be perfect, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, stop, and they catch together. If one kid drops, sometimes the student leader or captain will make them do it again. It's not rigidly strict, but the purpose is listening to the rhythm, getting the muscles warmed up, getting the mind warmed up. After they do the 10 singles, then they might go five, five, which means do five singles and then five doubles. One captain likes the doubles that are high and lofty to simulate five clubs. But one of my original uh, student leaders, Billy Watson, in the mid-2000s, instituted a really fast double. It's like, like three ball height or three club height doubles. So it's five singles and then five doubles, the same speed and the same height virtually. After they do some sets of 5.5, five, they might be, the high levels might go 5.10 or 5.50 or 5.100, even gone 5.1000. But that's just more for just epic endurance. Uh, but the standard would be 10 singles, then some 5.5s, five maybe 5.55, five, 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 which would be 5 singles, 5 doubles, 5 triples. Um, and then the ultimate and elite, which are the top two clubs, would do some behind the back catches, they might do some balance, they might do some, uh, well, of course, passing warm ups. But even the rec level, we're going to do the 10 singles. They're going to probably do a little bit of the club balance because even the youngest kids, we try to get them to do the 10 seconds of the club. Um, and, and then passing warm-ups are rare for the rec level because they might not even know six ball passing. Uh, but definitely juggling together in rhythm with clean catches instead of only juggling to get a record or till they get frustrated. The short controlled runs is what warm-ups are all about. Yeah, I always love to advocate certainly one ball. I remember uh, Vladek and uh, his dad Anatoly Miagostopov. I saw them at a festival in 95 and Anatoly at the time, oh he was probably 40 years old, he was one of the first men ever to do seven clubs. He'd just do one club back and forth, behind his back, under his leg, just do one uh, single flip, double flip, triple flip, quad flip. And Vladek at the time was 11, they'd do the same thing, one club, and work their way up to seven clubs. Uh, we don't necessarily start with one uh, in warm-ups, but if it is a kid learning a trick, whether it's three clubs, do one club back and forth to 20. Um, if they're going to learn, let's say, the half shower with three balls, I'll say, okay, drop a ball, you have two, uh, do the exchange again, but then do the right and then the left over. Just isolate that little bit of the trick. Do that about 10 times. If they drop, I say, yeah, go back and do it 10 times in a row. So the simplest trick that we usually probably teach is the over-the-top of three balls. Um, even if it's something like uh, back crosses with clubs, one club back and forth, you make it parallel to your body, and we try to break it down to the smallest bit possible. Um, some kids get impatient, and even some student leaders get impatient. They say, let's just go ahead and try the whole thing. Well, there's room for kind of breaking all the eggs and just letting it fly, but as Stefan Brentzel just told Robin and me yesterday, uh, if he really wants to get better, he will do the drills. If he's just juggling for fun, just go ahead and do it, be sloppy or whatever. But if you want to get it right, you're going to do drills. Just like learning vocabulary for English, learning pronunciation for a foreign language, you have to do the drills. Um, and so whatever given trick is, five balls also comes to mind. A lot of the chase for five balls. The way I teach five balls, um, first I have just three balls, do three balls at five ball height, really relaxed. And then I'll say, okay, now just do the flash, three ball flash with a clap to make sure that it's fast enough to get them all. One, two, three, clap. And after that, then, uh, then I'll institute the chase or the 5-5-2, five, five, which is three balls on the right, 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 left, left. And then all that will lead up to just simply catching all five in a flash. Um, and then, of course, five ball tricks are like three ball tricks. You can isolate it, whether it's the half shower or the multiplex or the under the leg, whatever else. And by the way, under the leg, that's also going to be one uh, at a time under the leg each way. Yeah, uh, well, we study a lot of Jason Garfield DVDs, and he's really strict. He says she should get 10 times in a row um, before you can consider performing it. Um, Billy Watson, who's probably my most prolific coach and, and former Jughead as well, Jughead grad, he will say 90% of the time, or maybe even 95% of the time. If you can't hit it, in fact, he used to drill um, his junior's routine from 06 and his senior routines from 08 and 09. He would drill them uh, maybe 100 times, 100 times the entire seven or eight minute routine, and he would average down how many drops for every run through, and he got down like 1.2 drops for 100 run throughs. And so that's all the tricks combined. 
I'm not sure how meticulous he was to get down one trick to get in there, but I'm guessing if he dropped in the one trick even five times out of 100 run throughs, he might either take the trick out or do an easier version of it. Stefan Brantzel, I mentioned already, he got the goal in 2011 with his partner Ben Hesnes in show emotion, and they really learned how to gather a trick in. If they were gonna to try to qualify, whatever it was, 11 club passing, and they knew it was gonna break it down, they gathered into a flash rather than try to qualify. So within a pattern, it's good to know and out, especially performance. Juggle within your ability, don't try to break the boundaries of records into performance. That's not gonna translate well to an audience. <laughs> website jugheads.com will have uh, about mm, 17 years of archived newsletters where I talk about stats and I talk about the kids and the program. Uh, we also have standards on that website. Uh, just There's photos, there's uh, a Facebook page linked to the jugheads.com website. It's inspirational just to see where there's about 120 kids that regularly juggle together. It shows other kids that kids can do this, but it does take discipline. In my case, I have the critical mass that inspires each other, whether it's a fourth grader who might be shy, but they juggle because other kids are around, or even one of those really ambitious junior IGA types. They juggle because they have the camaraderie. So if kids from all over, including Winnipeg, want to just be inspired by other kids like we were. In fact, Robin Chestnut, we studied his 1990 juniors video, along with Sean McKinney and others from that year, Brian Patz, um, Chuck Gunter who won, I had a video and I showed my earliest Jugheads that video many times from 94 to 96 before I returned to our first IJA um, in 1996 in Rapid City. So Jugheads.com, my email through that is Jug Paul, uh, actually it's Jugheads at Comcast.net. Uh, you could also text me, um, although I would say first try to email me, but if you want to get home in an emergency, then my cell phone is also on the website. Come on in. Jared is a rare older rookie, ninth grade rookie. Uh, he came in really motivated, really eager for both the community of juggling and juggling itself. And as a ninth grader, he already has nearly all, I think all but one of my advanced standards. We have a rec, then advanced, then elite, then the ultimate. And he's already within one year, almost advanced. So Jared, why don't you talk about your process of learning and uh, what are your favorite aspects of juggling and what is that one standard left for advanced? I want to learn a trick. I'll start at the basics, just one at a time. And then I'll build up to that certain trick. So if I was doing over the top, which I learned months ago, um, I would throw one over the top, one ball at a time. Like, I wouldn't have three, I'd only have one. And then I'd add the other two, and I'd do it that way. That, that's kind of how I'd learn things. What's the one standard you're lacking for advanced club? Ten with five balls. So ball point five. Was it 50 with four balls? 50 with four balls. 100 with three balls? Uh, well, that's a rec standard. That's a rec yeah. standard. A uh, hundred with three clubs. Mm -hmm. Three rings to a hundred as well. Yes. And a bunch of club passing stuff. Yes. Club passing is one of my favorite things to do. So 50 with uh, six club passing. I believe you had to get 20 with a point with six club pass or per three person passing. I, I think it's actually 10. This is just 10. Yeah, okay. Just 10. Mm -hmm. One auxiliary prop for advance, two for elite. Okay, that's right. I mean, that, that's also inclusive of 10 minutes on a balance prop for a rec. True. So which balance prop did you choose to get 10 minutes Stilts. On? Stilts, okay. Yeah. And then what is your ambition? You're only in ninth grade, which means you have three years left before high school graduation. What level would you like to achieve? And what is the most daunting to achieve that level? Uh, I would like to get to the elite standards and preferably about half the ultimate standards before I graduate high school. Mm -hmm. The most daunting part of that would probably be learning more balls than five because this is overwhelming. Yeah, six and seven can be exponentially more challenging, although it's step by step. So mm -hmm. like your friend Nathan, you might be getting that faster than you think, especially if that five ball pattern is really stable right. once you get five balls. One of my philosophies is simply goal setting. I, for what I lack in my own uh, juggling chops, I've never been a professional juggler, but I've worked with kids my entire career. I, uh, my philosophy is set goals and achieve them Kids get so much self-confidence by achieving something, they can own it. Even my littlest second graders, I have two second graders now, when they get 100 with three balls, no one did it for them. We could encourage them all we want, we can you know, help them fight through their tears of frustration. When they get it, they own it, and they'll probably never forget it, short of brain damage or some other thing. They'll be totally, they'll be 80 years old and, and getting three balls done. So I love goal setting. I also love teaching virtues through the juggling. I believe in the character building parts of it, and, and also relationship building. So one of the reasons we have such a critical 
critical mass. I want to develop them as young people, not merely to be good jugglers, but to really carry themselves with uh, a sense of dignity and honor, as well as giving back. So my whole student leadership philosophy of my 116 current jugheads, 17 are student leaders, actually 16 at this point. So 100 are members, 16 help to lead those other members while they're also members of another club. So there's this, it's almost like the Boy Scouts where there's this um, opportunity to move up the ranks. You become a member and then you go from rec to advanced to elites. Once you're an elite, ah, then you can give back and be a volunteer or maybe be an assistant where they earn money for another day to pay for their tuition. Then ultimate, it's like our varsity team. And then some of my kids will come back after high school and during college and coach. That's still pretty rare, but just all that idea is give back, learn to pass along what the IJ has taught all this years to render assistance to fellow jugglers and they can do it in a formal way through me or they can do it informally by their own gigs when they go and perform. Uh, we have had, uh, I know these stats because I just wrote this, so don't think I'm narcissistically memorizing this. <laughs> I do know that we've had, uh, I believe it's 14 teams in the last 16 years have appeared in the IJA Teams Championships. So of 14 teams with eight medals, I believe that's um, uh, not including my grads that got a gold. We have a gold for teams, we have uh, two silver for teams, and I want to say it's like five or six bronze for teams. So I think it's eight medals out of 14 different teams, whether it's small ensembles or the Jugheads, which is our ultimate club. Um, and then I think we've had uh, 12 juniors from Lana Bolin in 2001 till Danny Van Hamasen in 2015, who got the bronze most recently. So we have Billy Watson, Danny Van Hamasen, Ben Hesness, um, uh, Nate Martin and um, Jack Levy all have meddled in juniors. Nate got the silver, and even Matt Hall, you know Matt Hall, he thinks Nate should have got the gold because that particular year a Diabloist won, and as much as Matt loves Diablo, he says, you know what, I think Nate Martin should have got the gold with two drops and five club back crusts and such. Nonetheless, and I'm not, I'm not sour grapes, I'm just saying, judging is very subjective, whether you make the finals or whether you medal. Um, but anyway, those are some of the accolades. Uh, some medalists and juniors, a bunch of finalists and juniors, a bunch of finalists and teams, and some medalists. Also, um, uh, I received the education award from the IJ in 2000, back when we were still a 50-person program, and then the Founders Award for the uh, vaudeville, uh, Spirit of Vaudeville in 1999 at the, at the showcase. Um, and other than that, uh, yeah, just some of my individual kids have maybe won a, oh, People's Choice Award. Billy Watson won that in 19, 2009 uh, as a graduate, he was a seniors competitor, and then Show Emotion won the People's Choice as well in 2011. Um, so those are sort of the IJA related awards that we've uh, received over the last 17 years. Um, my name is Connie Cotter, and I have been a unicyclist for over 30 years. Competitor, coach, I run an organization, got a couple world championship titles to my name, a couple world records.